thanks very much, David. Thank you very much for coming, everybody. I hope you'll enjoy this, uh, whatever happens, as we go into another watercolour adventure. Um, it's a great privilege to be here, and again, thanks very much to David Poxham and the International Watercolour Masters for inviting me to do this. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, I normally paint outdoors, plein air painting is my thing, and that is almost all what I do these days. Um, when I do paint indoors in, uh, in the winter, then I do work from photographs. I don't do sketches because basically my outdoor painting, I think, is sketching, really. Uh, that's the way I regard it. And so I've got a photograph here that I'll show you um, that um, I'm going to work from today, OK? So I've got a couple of the ver versions of it. I just did the bottom one. Um, I've lightened that on a computer so that you can see the content of what I'm doing. But really, the top one is the atmosphere as it was. And that's kind of how I'm going to por portray it. And I'm not going to change very much because we've got a very quick demo, 55 minutes. Um, really, I'm going to be whacking the paint down pretty quickly to get it done. And so I'm not, I've, I've chosen one where the composition, I, I like the composition. I will change the sky a little bit. Um, but Basically, I take a lot of photographs when I'm not outdoors painting. I take hundreds of, or thousands of photographs. And so I did move around the scene towards that boat, a bit further away from that boat, to the left, to the right. I think I was crouching uh, to a certain degree when I took that, so I've got a certain sort of uh, eye level and so on. So I've got a composition anyway that I think is OK to work with. There's enough there to do and to hopefully talk about, to hopefully make kind of an interesting demonstration out of. Um, uh, just a few things to talk about then that, that I need to observe about this before I start drawing it out. There'll be a bit of drawing um, and before painting it. So as I say, I might change the sky a little bit. I quite like this sky. I like how we have a bit of a glow of light coming from here. I'll be trying to retain that. I may slightly dramatize the sky a bit more. I may bring this bit of cloud here on the left slightly more into the scene. Um, and I am emphasizing certain bits of it more than others. Um, but having said all of that, really, it's a rough guide. Very often when I'm working from photographs, I'll take a different photograph of the sky. Uh, I'll put various photos together and work from them together uh, to make an interesting picture or whatever. But yeah, uh, having said all of that about my, what my intent is going to be, it may end up nothing like that, or pretty much nothing like that. <laughs> it's a guide. It's a guide. And uh, you know the way that I... It probably looks quite insane as well, the way I paint the sky. It might look completely random. And I do embrace quite a lot of random in my work, actually, uh, try to use it effect, you know, uh, for the good of the picture. But there is a plan there. It's, um, <clears throat> perhaps I should tell you a bit about it before I do it, before I start. Uh, but I, I'm going to have to get on, actually, just with the drawing of this. And I'll expl explain the, you know, the, the painting process as, as I go through it as much as I can anyway. Right, so um, drawing out the biggest shapes first, so hopefully the small ones end up in approximately the right sort of place. So biggest shape in this is the sky. Second biggest shape is the, the land, the beach, etc. Um, so I've drawn two of them there just by putting the horizon line in. Now, next thing is, it's quite important actually with the composition to get it so, uh, so all these things are in approximately the right place. Um, so I have got to do a bit of drawing. Um, now, distance is over here, we've got a thin bit of the land, and then a bit of uh, an angle on the base of this ground coming towards us. Um, and then from there, I can, I can plot what's in the middle of the picture. I've got a hut in the middle of the picture. This is Walberswick, sorry, I should have said Walberswick in Suffolk. Um, very paintable place, if you like, the coast. Um, that shed is pretty much, there's all these fishermen's huts and sheds, and some of them are brick buildings. Um, but they, they kind of provide enough interest, um, along with boats, if you like, coastal scenes. That one's right in the middle. That helps me plot where this one is over on the right, which is almost sort of in the middle, the back of it, a bit further to the right than middle within t in terms of this gap. I might make this shed at, on the right-hand side a bit bigger than it is, sort of, to sort of... Um, add a little bit of uh, extra depth to the scene, in fact. I might move some of these sheds a bit, but actually, as I say, quite like the composition, so I'm not intending to change them that much. There's a very interesting building down here, which I will mark in uh, a bit of, at least, uh, because there's a bit that I need to remember to catch the light. I'm going to invent a bit of light shining off 
couple of these roofs, actually, as if there's been a rain shower. That's, I think, consistent with the way the image looks, um, so we can do that. To create a bit of counter change of light against dark and to draw the eye into that area of the picture a bit. Um, and then there are more sheds here. I don't need to draw them entirely. They're not too difficult, hopefully, to draw with the brush. I'm just getting me in approximately the right place. There is a bit, um, when it comes to painting these, I will do it more carefully with the brush than I am with the uh, pencil. There is the issue of perspective to uh, make sure I get right, of course, with buildings. Eye level is pretty much the top of the grass here, because I was crouching a bit as I was stood on the beach there. I quite like that sort of looking up at things a bit as well as looking down at things. And this boat, OK, the boat. I do need to draw a bit of this. So just to the left of that middle building, I see the boat and the back of the boat approximately the middle of this building, so roughly there. Now, drawing a boat, of course, uh, not the easiest of things. Again, when it comes to doing it with the brush, I will make sure I try to do an accurate job of the curves in certain places, which are always a bit challenging. But mostly, I want to make sure I've got it roughly in the right place at this stage with this. Okay, I might actually, what I normally do when I'm painting is uh, I, I draw very quickly, knowing that it's not all going to be right, and then I will do some rubbing out. But I find it just get something on the paper um, helps you tell whether it's right or not anyway. Uh, if you put a wrong mark down, it helps you see where the right, where it should have gone. So. Oh, I, sh I, wanted, I should have said, please um, call out questions at any time if you have any, and feel free to heckle. Uh, it makes it much more enjoyable <laughs> for everybody, including me, to be honest, if, if a bit of abuse <laughs> or heckling or anything like that. Okay, right, I'm just probably drawing more than I need to now, but so, okay. Let's crack on with the painting. Right, so um, I've mixed up a bit of colour already uh, to save a little bit of time. Um, Colour is of secondary importance to me in terms of the specifics of the colours, but um, I'm just going to re reawaken these, um, having mixed this, mixed this a while ago. So I've got a bit of light red here, though, in case you're interested. Uh, most of my paint colours are Windsor & Newton professional range. Um, this is light red, which I'll be using a bit in the sky and the sand. And then I've got here Indian red, which is not a popular colour because it's quite opaque. And phthalo blue red shade, which gives me warmer and cooler greys. And I, I, the reason I pre-mix paint, paint like this is because I have to paint so quickly in a minute when I, uh, the way that I do my sky is trying to get it all down in one wash, which I have to do because of the paper I use, um, which is a wood pulp paper, Bockingford. So I don't do any glazing. It's sort of uh, one hit, hope for the best, then live with the result. And that's, that's just my approach, really. So, you know, it's just a... Uh, so no, no pressure or anything, obviously. Yeah. Right, so um, I've got a warmer grey here with a bit more of the Indian red. Cooler grey here. And really the tone is just the most important thing anyway. Is it light enough? Is it dark enough? I have scraps of car, uh, watercolour paper like this nearby to test my tone on. And uh, I'll leave... I've got French ultramarine and Indian red there to give me a different mix of kind of warm and cool, slightly more purpley kind of greys. All right, and I think that's okay. Now, that means I can go. So I don't draw out the sky with pencil. I do sometimes, depending on a, in a different situation, where I've got like light clouds on a dark back background. Sometimes I do. Um, and on this paper, I use an 8B very soft pencil. Then you can rub out those lines at the end. So, but I don't when I'm doing a dark against light sky, such as this. Um, we've got like a, the light in the sky is the sun glowing through the clouds. So uh, hopefully I might have an indication of something that looks a bit like that at the end. And I do end up, unfortunately, chucking uh, bits of water from my brush all over the place because <laughs> it's so fast sometimes. Uh, I don't want any just there, so uh, I'll just pick up that bit. Right, so start, I've started off with clear water. 
and I'll wet the, paint in, the paper in places, not everywhere, because I always want some hard edges, or relatively hard edges. It's the relativity, um, everything, all about, every, painting is all about relationships and the relativity of everything like hard and soft edges, light and dark, cool and warm color, you know, you, you know the stuff. Um, but, uh, so, clean water, clean brush, and then I'll go to my pale warm, and then pale, uh, cool, pale cool, and then slightly darker cool. And I won't be able to talk too much through the sky. Excuse me, what sort of brush are you using? This is a squirrel hair mop, quite a large squirrel hair mop. Um, I won't be able to talk too much through the sky, which is why I'm rambling on a bit about it before I do it, okay? <laughs> okay, now, here we go. I need to just focus, actually, a little bit before I start, before I attempt this. Okay, so now some warm colour. Need a bit more tone in that, so a bit fresh paint. And a slightly warmer but grey colour. Now this could be drying very quickly. As soon as it, the paint goes down on this paper, it starts soaking in and drying out. Now, bearing in mind these cloud shapes a bit, it probably looks completely mad, I know, but there is... Right, now, some cooler. And getting slightly darker. Okay, now, some stronger tone. And uh, I do want to make sure I err on the side of not going too dark with the sky, which I can do quite easily. So I'm bringing that cloud in a little bit more than the original. I'm varying the colour a little bit as I come down this. to do all of this while it's still damp, so at this point I can do a bit of a tiny bit of lifting here and there if I need to, where I need, a, where I can see something's not working, needs to soften an edge or something like that a little bit. But most of it is done and I have to live with it and that's life, isn't it? Anyway. <laughs> okay, right, so the timing is critical of, you know, of how wet or dry it is, so um, okay, and uh, I think I'd better move on. So now, uh, the rest of the painting I, is based on what I can do really, um, based on what is currently wet or dry, and how damp or wet it needs to be. Um, I'm just drawing in a line there to make sure I know exactly where the edge of the beach is, roughly where the water line is. Because the next thing we do actually while, while I'm here is a bit of a glow over the sand. I want a bit, there's a fair bit of glow in the reference. Uh, Should I have a quick look at the reference again? Um, on the sand, look, the, the light shining off the surface. So I'm going to spare a fair bit of white and uh, quickly, by putting down some water first to soften the edges, get a bit of a glow around, basically around this boat as it is. And I want a fairly warm mix of my Indian red. And the blue. I 
Now, while I'm doing this, I will add some uh, what I call dry into wet, which is you know it's wet in wet technique. What, in other words, you're painting on damp paper, but adding really very neat, almost dry, therefore, if you like, tube paint into it. So, to get some soft edged, strong dark marks, a uh, bit, bit of texture. Um, Because I don't, the way I paint is I try not to have to return to any area uh, for a lot of, lot of bits anyway. I don't want to have to come over, for example, just to make it uh, darker or something, ideally. Maybe along the edge of this beach, I'm going to have a little bit of darker to emphasize light shining on the water. Uh, right, now up here, a bit as well. Actually, I can go straight into the land here if I wet where we've got um, bank, the bank here. Um, a bit of raw umber, that is, which is the base, the base for my greens. A bit of phthalo blue and a bit of Indian red, so red, yellow and blue all mixed together there. But more of the blue and a thick, pasty mix. Let's just try a bit. So I want, I'm because I've dampened the paper there, look, I'm going to get a soft edge, which is what I want there because, well, for various reasons, but I do. <laughs> it's the, I want it soft edge there because it's at the edge of the, the image. I don't want the eye to be taken to it. So I, do, I, use, I use a lot of soft edges in this way where you don't want focus. Um, hard edges where you want focus um, and sort of transitioning in various areas from one to the other. And the color of this is so dark, actually, of course, because um, it's low light, evening light behind cloud or well, afternoon. Um, you perhaps can't see the subtlety of the color, uh, I know, to be honest, but I've got some, I'm going from warm to cool and. Uh, it's all observable. Um, there's bits of mud, though, bits of grass. It's observable if you can actually see the, <laughs> the real thing, obviously, which we're having to cope without. But also, you can see it a bit in the reference. OK, now, uh, I can go down here with a bit as well. I need to, there is some light on the edge of the boat around the rim, which I need to, it's one of the things I need to be careful to negatively paint to make sure I don't lose. So if I'm not careful, <laughs> that's exactly what I will do. OK, now, uh, let's get a bit of this grass on the top. Again, I, I want to make sure this is dark enough. So I put a bit down. Is it, is it uh, I ask myself, is it dark enough? Is it light enough? Um, we'll vary the color of that a bit as well. But it is pretty dark. Um, Yeah. You've had about 20 minutes just to... Uh, okay, thanks. Keep you on track. Where did that go? Okay. <laughs> Too much yapping as always. Right. I can bring this a bit. I don't want an edge where the buildings are. I can bring that up into the building a bit, if you like, uh, if you sort of mean like this. <laughs> because, uh, I mean, I don't really need to, but I need to make sure there's no gap there. And the buildings are going to be darker, so that's not a problem. This here where I've just put this thick paint down is now easy. It's not totally dry yet, and it's easy to just ag agitate it and bring it back to life to soften into. It's a bit on the brown side, that, actually. I want it to be a bit cooler there, so lift some of that and plonk some blue down in its place a bit. And then I'll go off into the distance on the left with it. I've got to be doing some careful stuff here. <laughs> so some dark right up against the edge of this boat. So an important counter change of light against dark, dark against light. The uh, boat is obviously a strong feature, focal feature.
feature of the picture. I use my fingernail quite a lot to um, provide a bit of texture. There's a bit too much light coming up there. But there's bits of wood along the back of this, but most of it is not catching the light at all because it is uh, in, the sh in the shade because the light's in front of us. I think I'm taking a long time to do this. <laughs> okay. Um, any, anyone got a heckle? You're taking too long. <laughs> yeah. Just me, I'm heckling myself. I do a lot of that. Okay. Um, Right, let's get on with these buildings. These are quite dark, almost silhouetted. Um, so it's the shapes that are very important. Again, there's a negative bit of painting I've got to do here around the bit of roof that's catching the light just in front. but there's not going to be much detail in this building. Obviously, it's distant. My hand's shaking, which is not helping. I don't like to go down the handle like this, uh, but I'm going to a bit. I'm going to, I am varying the color a bit here, actually, which you would see um, up close. Uh, there's a bit of a gable end on this. Uh, very interesting building. I think it's like flats or a house, this one. But an odd, an odd, an interesting shape. Okay, now. So, Jen, is this yeah. the Walberswick side of that river, or is it looking at Walberswick? Uh, Walberswick is, is on this side. Yeah, I'm on the Walberswick side. Southwold being on the other side, yeah. Um, there's a ferry that comes down here, which reminds me. It's good to chat, you know, because that reminds me. Thank well, you very much. Because now, I mean... <laughs> Sorry. Have you? You have. We've done some filming on the beach, and uh, we went and got some ferry. Right. Ah. Right. Well, that's a, there's like a bridge to the ferry that sort of comes yeah. down here. Yeah. Little it's exactly like that, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. And. I'll back you up on the way, Jim. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, our sat nav took us to the wrong side of the river, so we had to Did get it? the ferry to the other side <laughs> to do the filming. Right. Start to a good day, I'm sure. Okay, there's uh, it's a bit of a tom uh, a tompoon a uh, pontoon um, type thing. This uh, going across the water there. And there are some things like that. Incidentally, there's boats and there's, there's, there's a lot of things that stick up in the air around here like that. Because um, there's, there's boat uh, oars, there's uh, boat sail uh, masts. I sharpened uh, my nail especially for this. I, it's, um, someone said to me once after I mentioned that, that's artist's quality. Yeah, artist's quality nail. Um, I'm keeping the light shining currently on some of these, and I'll, 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 uh, on the roofs of some of these, and I'll, but I will remove that from, mo from many of them. Ah, oh, the boat. I've got to do the boat, haven't I? <laughs> well, maybe I haven't, actually. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, I need to work at an angle. Um, in fact, quite often I would vary the angle a bit. Um, but normally I find it very helpful to work where uh, so the paint is slightly running down. You can literally drag the water out of the way when you need to, like for example, and um, as well as just the fact that it's I'm used to it, and you know. Uh, but also, you can see, of course, if it's flat, then you can't see it very well when you step back. Um, so I'm building these buildings, uh, sort of gradually. There's some steps coming down from some of these, and there's all sorts of stuff. Oh, that's a shame. There's all sorts of stuff um, around them, which that's the technical term, I think, in nautical for nautical things stuff. Um, let's get a bit of colour actually in here. Um, there's not much colour visible, but a little bit, and just to I can I can get a slightly more colour, a pure blue colour in there in places. Uh, a bit of thalo blue, which is a kind of nice, not very kind of natural sort of blue, but perfect for, therefore, some man-made things. These huts are actually quite often black, uh, boarded, but some of them, some of these buildings are brick as well. Okay, uh, I'm letting things run together a bit. Creates a bit of a range of textures. an upturned boat or something around there. Didn't really get that grass dark enough. Right, let's do the boat. Keep moving myself on to build things up gradually is what I want to do. So you're always creating the context in which to see what you're doing and hopefully judge it a bit better. Right, this boat. Jack. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Uh, uh, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Cheers. It's rock and roll for you, isn't it? Or rocking, anyway. Okay, so a um, bit of uh, cobalt turquoise. This is the sort of thing where you could easily change the colour. If the boat, the colour wasn't the, the, if the boat wasn't the colour you wanted, then you know I'd regularly change it. But actually, I'll, it's, it's perfect. It's like someone literally set the scene up exactly as I would like it. So. Um, this is a colour I very rarely use, but it's good for little highlights for man-made things. It's one that I know I might use when I go somewhere where there are lots of boats, or just uh, on figures, on people, something like that. Right, now while that's damp, I'm going to go in with really thick, just neat paint, uh, basically. So I've got a dry brush. Essential for, for me is something to dry the brush off on. Uh, so I always carry something like that in my pocket when I'm outdoors, uh, well, when I'm indoors, because I just try to do exactly the same thing when I'm indoors as when I'm outdoors. Um, but to get the, you need to get rid, sometimes just totally neat, neat paint. Now here, uh, see if I can go into this, see what the timing is like. So now that is soft edge. The curve on the end of this is pretty critical if it's going to be looked at by anybody. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so you're getting a soft edge there and let it, where it's bleeding in to the, the damp cobalt turquoise that I've put down already. And I want that to happen a bit on the above and a bit below as well, just a little bit. But if the timing were off, you could re-wet it, and I'm going to be re-wetting the bit below later as well, just to get a bit of the shadow where it meets the ground. Oh. I should be spending more time looking at my reference, to be honest. I'm getting a bit, making this shadow a little bit cooler. Um, it's a mixture of the 
Indian red and phthalo blue red shade, which gives you a very good strong dark. Um, but at the same time, I can do a bit of the texture on the beach with this while I've got it on my brush, I think. There's some pebbles and stuff, and I don't want to do too much of that, and I've already done some of it, so I don't want to repeat, but um, doing it a little bit differently and at different times, you get a, rain, a range of build-up of textures and marks. There's bits of seaweed all around here as well. Um, and so I'm going to get a bit of green color into that, and I'm going to dampen this while I do it in places as well. So just picking up another brush with clean water, exactly the same brush, actually, but just a, a, a clean one. Yeah. Oh yeah, cheers. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Love it. I was going to put birds in the sky. I don't, that's a goldfinch. That's uh, I don't know what they are. Uh, um, right. There you go. Cheers. Are you busy next Monday? Uh, so I, need, I could do it. I really could do with an assistant. <laughs> okay. Um, all right now. I can't believe I just realized I've completely not done something I should have done by now, um, which was an underwash of the sand. But I can put it on top. Well, I will put it on top. So <laughs> It's not ideal, but you can do that, actually. Um, right, oh, back to the boat for now. Back to the boat for now. So cobalt turquoise again for a bit of the inside. Oh, what? You see, the thing is, I don't normally have my water pot up here. Uh, it's normally under the easel down here somewhere, and so... <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Tony Hart would... There Tony Hart would be... Right? Yeah, but they are, you know. They very much are of, of the essence of the place, aren't they, you know? Ah, oh, right, here's, here's what we should be doing. How much time have we got left, any? Oh, all oh, right, cool. <laughs> well, uh, thought it was worse than that. Maybe even 25. Hang on a minute, you're, adding, you're kindly adding stuff on for me, aren't you? Uh, 20, 20, 24, and that's it. Okay. <laughs> can, you, can you just keep the countdown up? That'd be useful. <laughs> right. Right, well, that's damp. I didn't remember doing that. I wasn't doing that. Who did that? Anyway, <laughs> I was an autopilot. Okay, so we don't need quite as many little bits uh, of seat or, yeah, you know, like uh, struts and stuff. Again, more technical terms for you. I've got uh, a dictionary for the end about of nautical things, I, if you have any questions. Um, while it's damp, I want to drop in some thick paint again, basically. Right, so... Um, just to suggest... Actually, there's dark around the rim up here as well. And uh, a fair bit of dark at the far end. So I'll just let that bleed into what is already there. And actually, I've got to be careful. I don't want too much of a white. It's got to be quite a thin white rim where it's catching the light. Okay, now moving on again, let's go back to the beach. And uh, a bit more shadow around here. Actually, I really want to get a bit more tone and warmth into this sand at the back of the beach. So, here we go. I should let that dry, actually. Mm, I would get the hairdryer out, but I won't bother because there isn't time, really, now. So, here we go. At the risk of raising the underlying wash a bit more than I would want.
Now under here, I'm just going to re-wet that and uh, bring a bit of that out. Anyone got any burning issues? If you have, maybe you need to get up and go for a walk. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I'm here all for the next 20 minutes. Right. Uh, folks online are discussing whether they can see a, a little face in your sky. And I think I can see what they're talking about. <laughs> yeah. see a little, looks like a little panda to me. Can see it looks like a little... Uh, yeah. No, where is that? Sorry. I, I'll emphasise it now. Um, Oh yes, okay, yeah, yeah. Nice. The panda wasn't there when I was there, and I think you've added that. Yeah, well, you know, I did say I embraced a bit of random. Um, okay. That's all about now, sorry, Alright, let's go back to the buildings for a while, shall we? Um, do a bit of repair. My hand was shaking a lot when I did that. Right, now, uh, some of these I'm, I'll, I'll change the colour of a little bit, actually. I think uh, I'm going to get a bit of the blue as if there's a bit of metal roof uh, on here. And a bit of... Uh, imagine this one is tiled. Nice Norfolk. Light red is a sort of perfect colour for that, but I will tone it down because it's evening, of course, and the, the, without much light, there ain't much colour. And so, a bit of that. This building, this shed, uh, just put in a little bit more information and darkness on this side particularly. This could do with being a bit darker, actually, in places. When you're working from a photograph, I mean, I, I find, I feel like I'm just making stuff up a lot of the time when I would, I'd, I'd rather not be. But, so, uh, you know, having been here, um, and actually, and having actually painted here, I do know that uh, the sort of thing that's here, which is helpful, I suppose, but... Um, I don't like particularly making stuff up. I do use quite a fair bit of, of artistic license uh, in my painting, but um, small things, really, little tweaks, rather than totally making stuff up. And the result when you don't make stuff up is that it's generally much more convincing for obvious reasons than when you do. I find that building, building things up like these bit <laughs> huts, or sheds gradually like this, um, means that you're working with the paint at different drynesses, things like that, so you get ultimately a range of texture by the end, um, which hopefully will make it interesting. <laughs> and these buildings do have these things, um, I don't know, weather vanes maybe, some of them, sort of attached to the front of these huts. Um, I don't want to do every last one of them like that, I don't, I don't think, anyway. And every last one of them had a roof, things like that on the roof, but quite a few do. So I'm leaving bits on these roofs where 
The light may be glinting off them. Okay, cheers. All right, now really painting a picture, you, need, you should take a lot more time than when you're doing a demo. Moving away from it, walking away, take your eyes off it, come back, and then stuff that you've completely forgotten or you, you planned totally to return to to do will jump out at you. And um, sometimes I finish a painting or virtually finish it and uh, realize I've not actually started a bit of it because you, you get blind spots. So walking away is something that I would normally do much more. Um, to see what those things are. Okay, now, um, it's a bit light. Everything is actually a, bit, a little bit lighter than I was intending, actually, um, because, like the grass, I don't like to do this, but I'm going to just go back over a, a little bit of the grass. So I'm going to re-wet where it's probably pretty much dry. I don't need to do too much of this, actually, but just here, light catching the very furthest bit. But a bit darker, closer to us. I'm going to re-wet just at the edge here and just put a little bit more soft detail into of trees in there. Or a bush. So that's damp. I can come in with really strong paint. Dry into wet, think of it as, so that once it's damp, you don't, you don't need to be adding more water, common mistake that learners like me, <laughs> like all of us, make. Um, see, that is just dried, soaked in very quick, but it's a soft edge now at the edge of the scene. And I've done that because actually I was a bit conscious that this building was the same distance in as that building. That's one reason why I wanted to make that a little bit bigger than in the reference to make sure it's not symmetrical in a way that would be a problem. So I put a soft edge tree right on the edge, and there is in the reference, actually. That, um, so I didn't invent that idea. But um, so that we don't have a symmetry either side in any sense. OK, now, uh, I've actually cr I was going to leave more of a gap there. Uh, unfortunately, I've closed the gap up slightly. I was going to put in a couple of figures. I will squeeze a figure in, I think, because it's a helpful little thing to draw the eye into the scene. For me, this composition, it kind of, it nicely leads the eye around a fair bit, but obviously we have a, lot, a little lead-in of the bank taking us down to this interesting building here. And then the boat, though, points us in here as well. Uh, there's various entry points to it. The sky, hopefully, kind of takes us around like this as well. Um, but, yeah, if the boat takes us in there, with one of my random moves, I've pushed this little bit of this um, building out. And I, I honestly do that a lot. I use my fingernail a lot. And it does have a lot of, um, creates a lot of useful uh, sort of effects. But at the same time, it can easily do something that's not particularly useful. And uh, it's kind of what happened there, is it's closed up a gap where I was planning I had, had thought about putting in a couple of people figures. So I'll, I will actually just squeeze in perhaps one somewhere now, I think. Useful for scale and uh, interest, but also yeah, to grab the eye and take it down here a bit, perhaps. OK, let's try putting one here. And they were a bit further away, maybe. A 
I've got like a small mark there already, uh, a few around there. So in that situation, you've got to be aware that there's already a small mark there. You don't need to duplicate. Um, if there's something there already that is actually perhaps doing the job that you're thinking of doing yourself, it can quite easily happen that you end up duplicating if you're not aware of it. Right now, a couple of birds, deliberate birds. <laughs> it's always good to get a titter out of mentioning how you're going to paint a couple of birds. <laughs> People, I mean, yeah, uh, I, think, I think birds are very much a part of somewhere like this, aren't they? The atmosphere. So, there are, and the, basically they are just a small mark in an otherwise part of the picture where there aren't small marks, like in the sky. So it, again, helps if you put them in the right place, which is obviously very important, to lead the eye around. Um, it can help quite a lot with that. So uh, where? So where should they go? Hands up. Where should they go? Not there, 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 and there, anyway. I think uh, I'm thinking sort of, well, I don't know. I t what I do normally is I hover like this for ages and see, would it be OK if, I, if one was there? Um, and they're not always necessary, of course, actually. And in fact, a lot of the time, well, my general policy with birds actually is don't put them in unless you're sure that they're going to help. Um, quite often you can't be that sure, but I'm going to do, do a couple of birds. And they are, <laughs> it's funny, you talk about it for half an hour and there's a tiny mark. <laughs> a, a, tiny, a tiny mark which can completely ruin the painting if you get it wrong. <laughs> but. It's of utmost importance. Everything is, right? So, specs. Oh yeah, that is just the screen. Ah, actually, that's given me an idea. That's very good. Um, it could have been worse, couldn't it? Um, Okay, right. Now, how are we doing for time? Uh, about five minutes. Okay, well, now... Don't go bird. <laughs> oh, go on, just for you. No, no, there's, there's enough birds. You can... Ah, oh, I don't know. That's nonsense, I don't know. All these rules, eh? Crows often come in twos. If you do two birds and, and you know, they're sufficiently crow-like, then they'll look like crows. Um, yeah, I know what you mean, though. Fair point, sorry. <laughs> Um, right, so uh, well, uh, well, there's a couple of things actually that might actually make it better. But what I was going to say was, I've done a lot of this, and comes a point where it is what it is. Unless you're sure something is going to make a watercolour better, then in general it will make it worse. So don't do it. And um, but I can slightly improve the shaping of this boat by getting rid of what was a little bit too much of a large rim to it there. Uh, so let's just do that. Has anyone got any questions at all? The left hand side. This one. Sorry, this that, sorry, this one here. Did you say I should I should clarify it a bit? What's hap what's happening with it? <laughs> ah, okay. Um, um Well, it's quite an interesting, sh odd-shaped building. It's um, it is kind of. Well, I, d I wanted to. Uh... <laughs> Are you okay? <laughs> you okay, Gary? Um, sorry, sorry. Yeah, that was I'm moving it. Sorry. No, that. Uh, uh, it's down. It's down. It's. Uh, there you go. I'm not going to do anything to the building. I don't think actually. Um, it's quite an interesting, odd-shaped building. And I've, I've silhouetted it a bit more. I've left out some of those details in white that you can see there. This is actually, ha actually, I don't know if I remember if I explained. This is artificially lightened on the computer there, right, this bottom one, um, just so you can see the content a bit better. But actually, this is certainly much more how it actually was. And this is how I've been sort of intending to portray the atmosphere, you know, the light level, etc. And so if you squinted it at all, which is always a very good idea, um, then you know you don't really see any internal detail there. 
and in terms of the marks and everything, I, I don't think it's worth me sort of returning to it. So, um, in fact, really, there's not much else that I would do. I mean, I could, okay, let's pontificate slightly uh, in areas where I can see it could potentially uh, improve things a little bit. Just putting down some marks and softening the edges of a couple of them. And actually another little detail, another little detail which again might be handy because there aren't that many small details. Okay, we could have <laughs> rope coming off the back of the boat and bits of seaweed perhaps on that rope a little bit. And just a few. I can see, you know, loads of things on here which aren't quite, you know, as I would have liked them, but... That's demos for you, for folks. <laughs> um, I think I might as well stop. I, I, uh, what's the time? Sorry, have I got... You've got a couple of minutes if you need it. Okay, well, I'll just uh, maybe do a little bit of... Uh, let's, I'll tell you what, I'll take, I'll take it out of um, its frame and... We can have a look at it at least. So, oh, thank you very much. Hmm. Uh, okay. Well, I've introduced a bit more colour into this than there was, and actually, that doesn't particularly necessarily help the effect of low light. Um, to do that, but I wanted to make sure I had a bit of colour in it, particularly as I was working quite dark and working on a screen, which I didn't know how that would come, acro come across, etc. Um, but there you go. Um, to summarise, lots of soft edges in the sky, but a few hard. I do the same on the land, so a lot of hard, because there's a lot of buildings. But using dry brush and um, a, a mixture of different types of texture together to try to suggest detail, a bit of scraping out to restore some lights against dark for the counter changes rather than doing very careful negative painting and some soft edges on the land as well trying to create a bit of a glow coming from this glow in the sky small marks birds here and there and some small details like figures add a bit of life and interest and pull the eye in but the composition is obviously highly important uh, from the outset if you're trying to make a good picture to take the eye around and these little details like birds are more for looking up close, you know, at the end. I've just seen another thing that actually I would, I just want to do quickly. But just a very small thing, really. I mean, actually, I could put um, a tone over the water, but it doesn't, I don't know if it needs it, actually, anyway. Um, but um, it's not worth doing it now. But OK, I'll stop there. Well, thanks very much. Thanks very much. Hope that was of interest. Enjoy the rest of your day.